Why? Why are the Britishers better than Australian and American? Love Island is like complete trash. They know it, we know it. It's great. There was a big vampire phase in the middle. I don't know what happened. That was probably the worst ending to a TV show I've ever seen. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back. If you're new around here, I'm Yvette and I moved to the UK about, ooh, what was it? It was in May, so four months ago, four or five months ago. Depends when you're watching this. Um, so I have been in the UK for a while, so I wanted to make some videos just explaining my experience um, and seeing if you guys can help me out because you guys have helped me out a lot. Um, I'm going to the shops later to find me some onion salt because apparently that's chicken salt. But anyway, we'll get into this video. For this video, I wanted to discuss British TV. Um, I know I've discussed the British TV license before, and you guys have... To be honest, it's still a bit confusing, because some of you say I need a license, and then some of you say it's only for BBC, and so I don't even know to the day, but better safe than sorry. So I wanted to go through some of the different categories of TV that Brits do and what they do well, some of my favorite TV shows, get some TV show recommendations from you guys, and then I'm gonna explain why I think they're better, in my opinion. Definitely Australian TV, we can make that comparison later, but also American TV. I wanna leave that to the end, because I think if you see the shows I like, that make, might make more sense as to why, you know? So anyways, I will stop rambling and we will get into it. So the first category I want to do is reality TV. Um, now reality TV, I thought it's a good one because it can, we can compare British, US and Australian. Um, my favorite British uh, reality TV shows, um, obviously we've just, it's now autumn. So we're leaving summer. Love Island was a big thing. I thought I was better than Love Island. I'm not, I'm trash. Love Island was great. Um, I hadn't watched it before, this is my first season. Um, and I got so into it. It's very self-aware, which is like I think the UK does best. The narrator like taunts and mocks the contestants, which would never happen anywhere else. And they, they know they're ridiculous and they make ridiculous games just to heighten that. Daniel was away for a week for work. And so I was left to my own devices and ended up marathoning all of Love Island and got way too into it. So that was definitely consuming most of my summer. <laughs> Love Island has had an Australian season, which I didn't get into, um, and they also have a starting a US one, I think, so I'm not too sure if that's launched or yet, so I don't know how that's going. But in terms of dating shows, we do have The Bachelor, which I do get very into in Australia. Um, the US one, I would, it's just hard to watch. Um, but the US one, the Australian one's quite good, that's what I'm into, but nothing could top Love Island, I think, because just because of how self-aware it is, you know? The Bachelor's great, but I don't think they're gonna get love, and I don't think. <laughs> I don't buy into the fantasy, which I think no one really does. I think that's what they're getting at, but Love Island, they don't even pretend there is a fantasy. Then also, because we're now into autumn, like I said, Bake Off season, which I've watched Bake Off for many years and I love it so much, which is so funny because Bake Off and Love Island are like, which are diametrically opposed because Love Island is like complete trash. They know it, we know it, it's great. But Bake Off is the most wholesome, sweet show. I'm not even a baker. I just love the com camaraderie and like the stuff they managed to make, the creativity. Obviously, Noel Fielding and Sandy Tonks, are, Tonks, Tonkins. A great host. I've loved Noel, Noel Fielding, which you'll see on a different list um, for many years. So he's great. It's great. It brings, it warms my soul. Everyone's so wholesome. There's nothing better than someone's cake going awry and they can't decorate it in time and then they all run over and they all start icing together. It's so cute. <laughs> and then you just compare that. America is much more intensely competitive. You know, they're like, I'm going to win and I'm going to destroy you and I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. And like they're much more, I'm sure the producers make them do it. I'm not making you comment on Americans, but what their TV shows are like is very intense. Um, and I feel like Australia is like, ah, oh, yeah, no, nah, she'll be right. Like, just leave her be, she'll be, it'll be fine. Um, I'll leave her to it. You know, they don't have that same, like, politeness and camaraderie that they just seems to have on Bake Off. I don't know why, it's just so great. Bake Off isn't in any other country, that's probably why. There is My Kitchen Rules in Australia, and there is, like, MasterChef in Australia and the US, which, both of which are very intense, you know, Gordon Ramsay-esque. If you're watching Bake Off this season, tell me in the comments below who your favorite is. I really like Henry and I really like Michael. I think Michael might be my favorite. He's just so like chaotic good. He like wants the best in the world, but he's just so all over the place and I love it. 
Um, my newest addiction in terms of reality TV is actually a show called The Circle, which isn't as famous as it should. They've only had one season. I watched it last year, despite being in Australia. Um, essentially, The Circle is a social media reality show, I guess is what you could call it. They all live in an apartment um, and they all present themselves on social media, some authentically, some inauthentically. Um, and they have to do these online little games and you've got to try and figure out who the rat is, similar to the mole. Um, honestly, it's so revolutionary. There's nothing given to compare in the other two countries. Um, but I got very into that. And then there's Alex Holborn. Holborn. Um, he ended up winning it and it was such like a dark horse and it was like you just got so excited for him and he was playing a girl even though he was a guy and it was oh, the heartbreak that Dan had. Did you watch The Circle? Because I feel like not many people watch The Circle. Um, so that's reality TV. Not everyone's a cup of tea. I get it. But they also do really really good scripted shows um, and I've put comedy and drama all in the one just because they're all you know scripted. Um, I have made a list because I was like, I'm going to forget them because there's too many to mention. So my number one crime TV show of all time is actually Broadchurch with David Tennant and Olivia Coleman. Before I think she was even Olivia Coleman. Actually, a lot of this has Olivia Coleman in it. But yeah, Broadchurch, best crime show I've ever watched. It's my favorite. I still run around going Milach, <laughs> like David Tennant. That I always go on, on uh, Netflix and I'm like, shows like Broadchurch because I need more like that. It was so well written and so good. Doctor Who, such a classic, have kind of dropped out of it recently, um, which is a shame because it's nothing as Jodie Foster. I think whenever Capaldi was in it, I just couldn't get into it as much. Tenet's obviously my favorite Doctor. Everyone has a favorite. <laughs> Matt, Matt Smith was also very, very good. Um, but yeah, Doctor Who, obviously a classic. Who doesn't like Doctor Who? There's also a show called Doctor Foster while we're talking about Doctors. Um, I found this one on Netflix and it has an actress in it whose name I forgot but she's quite famous um, and that's just like a family drama which I normally don't like you know who's sleeping with who's night neighborhood village dramas but this one really got me good and I really enjoyed it oh it has Eve it has the villain from killing Eve who's now why am I so bad at names today I'm a bit getting a bit sick I can tell she's great um, obviously the office the office is a classic spawned off like everyone in the US office's career and obviously Ricky Gervais is now like Empire my favorite comedy of all time I would say is IT Crowd and my favorite comedian of all time is Richard Iowati. It I could watch that show till the day I die. I love it so much and Noel Fielding's in that one too. It's so good. Chris O'Dowd, it's fantastic. Um, I think most people have seen it by now because it's very 90s or early 2000s actually yeah but like the jokes with the internet and not knowing and Jen just being clueless it's oh my heart. I think I think the IT crowd was popular here. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it is. A show I grew up watching, which is probably why I feel like I relate more to British culture than Australian culture, um, because I grew up on a lot of these TV shows and a lot of kids' TV was actually British. Um, one my dad introduced me to was Red Dwarf, um, which is obviously a classic. It had so many seasons. Um, I had the first, I think, four seasons on DVD back in when I was in high school, and I used to just like watch them on repeat. Um, and it's, yeah, absolute classic. It's a sitcom, I guess, in space, set in three million years in space. It's so bizarre, so British, and I absolutely love it. Speaking of bizarre and British, The Mighty Boosh, another Noel Fielding classic. Um, that is just an acid trip waiting, like you're just watching an acid trip, but you never know what you're gonna get, and that's what I like about it. Um, another really good classic in recent years was The Inbetweeners, um, that classic schoolboy humor, which is actually quite similar to Australian kind of you know schoolboy humor very similar um, but the characters in that were great um, the guys were fantastic I think the one of them just finished on the waitress play in in um, in London so they've all gone on to do good things which is crazy and and Jay who I think it was Jay he was like the biggest drop kick of them all is actually like the nicest guy and I think he's a gamer now on YouTube I don't even know definitely not one to watch with your parents but if you want to laugh my mum's favorite show that she always used to watch when I was growing up was absolutely fabulous or ab fab which was Eddie and Patsy Joanna Lumley and Jennifer Saunders two amazing comedians great women like paved the way um, and the joke was always that my mum was basically Eddie and I was Safi the daughter who was like cleaning up after her and 
being the responsible adult while my mum just went off and partied because that was my life as a child. So my mum loved to have fab because that was self-reflective of our situation. But still incredibly funny. Um, once again, very nice. That one's very, very 90s. The fashion is 90s, everything. And they have some crazy cameos in it too, which is so great. If you haven't seen Ab Fab, which I suppose a few people wouldn't because it's quite old. Um, Particularly, I've got a few American viewers. All of these are worth watching if you're American because I doubt you would have heard of many of them. This is gonna sound really dumb. Favorite scripted show that I've just found but it's actually quite old is Peep Show, which is obviously a cult classic. It's the funniest thing I've seen in a long, long time. Um, Daniel and I still quote each other, quote it to each other all the time. Like, do you wanna play capitalism, Jeremy? And like, oh God, there's just so many lines. Olivia Coleman's in that too. David Mitchell's in it favorite comedian. Um, I love him on panel shows, which is a whole other category. But yeah, Peep Show was around in the 90s and you can kind of track it because it was kind of on for a long time, which is odd for a British show. Most British shows end like three, four seasons and only six episodes. But Peep Show was long and lots of episodes, which I'm completely fine with. Peep Show, if you don't know, is first perspective shot TV show. And David Mitchell plays like the uptight a type A person and then he's got his roommate who is kind of the type B, very chill, never has a job, always on drugs, likes to party, no responsibilities and it's their dynamic as roommates and as best friends um, and it has their internal monologue which is really where the humour comes so they'll say one thing and think something else which is oh my gosh so great. Really hard to explain, really weird, fantastic show if you haven't seen it. I feel like everyone would have seen it because it's so old and it launched so many careers but if you case you hadn't because I hadn't for a long time amazing um, could you tell me in the comments below if any shows that seem to fit those vibes that you can recommend so anything crime related like Broadchurch I love them please give me as many as you can I love a miniseries um, any comedies that are like IT crowd peep show red dwarf any of that sort of stuff I'm all about it so Please give me those recommendations. Um, I've run out of shows, I can't, I think I've seen it all. When you're comparing those to Australia and America, Australia doesn't really have many things. There's Neighbours and Home and Away, which I know the UK gets. They're more like soaps, which as you'll notice, I didn't put any soaps on my list because um, the UK has its own soap TV show, which is I think EastEnders, isn't it? Which isn't my cup of tea. Power to you if you love it, but it's not my thing. We don't really have any TV shows outside of soaps. So that's why I have no Australian TV shows that are my favourites. Um, there's a category on here that only England seems to have. Um, Australia has it a little bit, but England owns the category and that is panel shows. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, America doesn't do panel shows and they're my favourite. A panel show is essentially a bunch of comedians trying to one-up each other, a vague idea of a topic on top, <laughs> you know? Um, some famous ones, some of my favourites. My favourite one of all time is actually Would I Lie to You, where a bunch of comedians and then they bring in some actors or just personalities and they have to say a, a statement and sometimes it's true sometimes it's a lie and then everyone gets to interrogate them and grill them and see if they're telling the truth and you get to play along at home it's kind of like a game show but more like a panel show less like physicality um and the bands on that amazing i love it so much so Definitely like Would I Lie To You is my favorite. Also been going on a long time. Bit of a nerdy one, but I really like QI. Um, QI is great for background noise. Um, Stephen Fry was fantastic. Um, Sandy's just as good. I just really like, it's just such a good easy thing to watch if you don't want to think too much and they're having like an interesting discussion about weird facts. You know, um, I know I'm probably the only person under the age of 50 watching it, but I don't care. I love it. Also nine, nine out of 10 cats, which a bunch of comedians riffing on current events basically. And then there's this one show that happens once slash twice a year, depending, called Big Fat Quiz of the Year, and I look forward to it so much. It's like this big marathon quiz show, pub quiz game show on TV, and they have three teams of two people, um, usually a mixture of comedians and personalities or actors, and Jimmy Carr always hosts, and it's like a pub quiz that you have to play along with, and it's hilarious and iconically Russell Brand and uh, Noel Fielding were partners one year and they just derailed the whole thing and then went to win it and it was amazing um, and it's the pub quiz is based on everything from the last year so it always comes out on Boxing Day I'm so excited and then they also do a big fat quiz of everything in January and I don't know why but I love it and I'm into it and I don't want to question it the big why why are the British shows better than Australian and American one they exist you knock Australia out. <laughs> Joking. I mentioned this. I mentioned it briefly, but British shows don't seem to drag on. They have their story. They have their story arc, and once it's told, they're done. You know, 
Um, I feel like this happens a lot with American shows. Um, obviously, I still like American TV, don't get me wrong, there's heaps. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a show I really liked when I was growing up. She was a vampire slayer in high school and that was the thing. And then she was a vampire slayer in college and then you're like, is this the same thing? Because of the level of trauma to make it realistic, it just becomes this really dark show and it goes places it didn't necessarily start with and then she ends up being an adult trying to be a vampire slayer and it just loses that magic. Same with Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, Dexter was a great show that jumped the shark completely. <laughs> um, that was probably the worst ending to a TV show I've ever seen. <laughs> or like How I Met Your Mother, that's very um, contested finale. Um, I think the finale when it was written made sense, but because it went on so long, the characters evolved and developed that by the time the finale happened, it didn't make sense anymore. And then there was a lot of unrest and everyone was upset about it. So that's how it can go the other way. Whereas that doesn't happen with British TV shows because they don't go so far off the plan. Um, same with Vampire Diaries. If like that, I watched that one for a long time. <laughs> Clearly I liked vampire shows. There was a big vampire phase in the middle. I don't know what happened. Her boyfriend was a vampire. Then eventually she became a vampire and then eventually she wasn't even in the show anymore but they kept going. Like that would never happen on British TV. I find American shows tend to put in this like level of emotion, which sometimes can work. Like one of my favorite shows of all time was Scrubs which did have weird emotional overtones at the end of the episode, despite being um, really funny, which is quite rare. But generally, like, mod Modern Family is a good comedy, and then they'll just get really emotional for no reason. That doesn't happen in British shows. They're a comedy, they're ridiculous, there's no emotion, they're characters. Or they'll have, like, a drama where it's all emotion all the time. <laughs> you know, they don't intermix, it's like, they're separate. Um, and I think that's a strength to not intermix, unless you somehow manage to strike gold and get a Scrubs type TV show. So there are exceptions, but generally I find that. Obviously, I love British humor. I love dry, sarcastic humor. One show I infamously do not like, it's American, is Big Bang Theory. Um, I think it's almost a joke now because so many people don't like it. Maybe you like it, I don't know. It's just very, you know, and there's like, the jokes are just like scripted, like almost stand up or like one liners and sometimes they don't make sense or they're only, they're not very real characters, you know, the caricatures. Um, and once again, that show gets weirdly emotional too in the middle. Like it's, if you take Big Bang Theory or Two and a Half Men, they're two shows that kind of amplify what I'm talking about. Obviously there's ones that like British shows that'll go too long and jump the shark and there'll be American shows that don't and they're very well and succinct. But generally, if you look at Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen left, put Ashton Kutcher in it's still going <laughs> and the storyline is always similar and then they get weirdly emotional in the middle for no reason but the humor is very like predictable they need a laugh track I do not like a laugh track generally um, or toilet humor really not into toilet humor um, I love you know sassy like one-liners like Peep Show is like the perfect example. Although actually no, Peep Show had toilet humor, that's a bad example. IT crowd, that was very nerdy humor because it was all like IT stuff, which um, my dad and I are into computers and stuff growing up. So it appealed to my sense. Also my mum is completely not into computers so we couldn't like put Jen as her kind of thing. Don't appreciate fart jokes or toilet humor, which Brits tend not to do, sometimes they do, and I don't like them when they do it. Um, and the writing is a bit more witty and dry and less in your face you, I, I love a joke that you have to think about and you don't get a laugh track to tell you to laugh. Often, I could be completely wrong, and this is just something I kind of observed, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the time in these, a lot of the comedies anyway, um, they don't act, they don't cast actors, they cast comedians. Uh, Richard Iwad is a comedian, he trained at um, Footnotes, Footlight, sorry, at Cambridge. David Mitchell, same thing. Um, John Cleese in Faulty Towers, comedian. Like they're all comedians, they're not actors. It's very, sometimes they'll go across into drama, but very rare. They're comedians, they'll do stand up, they'll do a TV show. And that makes, I think that makes the writing better. I think it makes the jokes better because it's not someone who's supposed to be a drama actor deciding to go into comedy for some reason, you know? They tend to stay in their lane. And then you notice this more so um, when you watch panel shows, which I mentioned before. So, because then they'll put the comedians on a panel show and you'll see, oh, they're actually, really witty and funny and often the comedians will write the show as well that they're in so it helps I think if you write a line how you want it delivered and then you deliver it like succinctly it makes more sense. So I have rambled long enough about why I love British TV and why I think it's the best. Tell me in the comments below any TV recommendations that you have for me because I always need a new TV show to watch and 
tell me if you agree or disagree. Like, do you love, maybe you love American shows. Do you love that laugh track and that emotion that they stick in for no reason? I don't know. <laughs> um, or if you watch Neighbours, I can't help you. A lot of people think I watch Neighbours because I'm Australian. I'm like, no, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so I can see you next time. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.